Good morning once again, and again, it's good to be with you. If you've been watching these devotions, or reading your scriptures, of course, you're going to see that there's a repetitive theme that runs through all of it. Trust the Lord. If you trust the Lord, then you will be walking in step with His plans, which always succeed. Trust the Lord. There's a passage I want to share with you today. We've talked about this before that, that again, hits that truth very hard. It's from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, where God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. In that exclamation, there is that inherent command and encouragement. Trust me, I know the plans I have for you. Today in our text, we're going to look at that again. And again, we're going to see how important that is. In our text today, our, our portion of scripture that we're going to look at a little more closely, we're continuing to follow Jacob's family. And last time, Joseph revealed himself to his brothers who were terrified because of what they had done. But they realized Joseph had forgiven them. Beautiful act of forgiveness. And now that they are all one happy family again, Jacob moves down to Egypt. And from this Beersheba area... He comes down to Egypt, and since Joseph has gained such favor with the people of Egypt and with Pharaoh, Pharaoh gives them this entire land of Goshen. It's on the outside of Egypt because for some cultural reason they had something against shepherds. So they weren't within the city limits. But they had this whole area of Goshen in which they thrived. Now, Jacob and his family are reunited. But as Jacob begins to realize that his time on this earth is coming to an end, he gathers his children before him, and he gives them blessings. Not just well wishes for the future, but he prophesies. He prophesies by God what will be in store for all of these brothers, talking about where they will fit in history. And it's amazing when you look at it, how it it really comes to fruition. Of course, perhaps it shouldn't be amazing because when God prophesies, we know it always comes true. But God has plans for each of these children of Abraham. God has plans. Now, would they always follow those plans? No. But they would learn as Abraham and Isaac and Jacob learned over a long and difficult life that if you trust those plans, then your plans are in line with God's plans and you're going to find confidence, and you're going to find joy as you see God's plans, now your plans, all falling into place. God has plans for you. Now there is one prophecy I do want to share with you. Um, all of the prophecies given to Jacob's sons are recorded in, in Genesis chapter 49, but there's one that stands out. Judah. Verse 9 of chapter 49, he says, Judah, you are a lion's cub. You return from the prey, my son, like a lion. He crouches and lies down like a lioness. Who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs, and the obedience of the nations is his. And this is referring to Jesus. This is a prophecy about how it is through this thread, this line, that the Savior will come. Judah's family will come will one day produce the Savior. And Judah will be that tribe that stands above the rest. And history shows that it was. It was the only remaining tribe after the captivity by Assyria and Babylon. Judah. God has plans. And it shouldn't be amazing because we know that that's how it is. Simply trust. Trust me. Now there's something else here i got to point out. Um, this is an amazing thing as well, and it's recorded in Genesis chapter 15. Going back, God had promised Abraham uh, the land of Canaan. Many times he promised that. But in chapter 15, he says to Abraham, Before you possess this land, your family are going to be strangers in a foreign land for 400 years. They will be enslaved and mistreated, and then I will bring them out because... The sin of the Amorites living in this area has not yet reached its full measure. Just a couple simple verses where God is making a point that he's not done working with these people. He's got plans for Abraham and his family, 
But first, he is dealing with these people. The day will come when these people are kicked out of that land because of their idolatry, their refusal to listen to God, but not yet. There are still people who believe in God. We met one, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, who was a priest of God. But God is working with these people. And so often, I know when I study the scriptures, I, we get focused on this, this, this nation of Israel, Abraham and his descendants, as if they were the only believers on the planet, the only people that God is working through, but they're not. God is working with everybody. God sometimes works on a global scale, as he did with Joseph, um, sparing the world from this famine. But he also works with people one at a time. The plans that he has for you. I know them, he says. I know the plans I have for you. As a nation, as an individual. And that's really the comfort I'd like you to have today. To know that you have free will. God has, has allowed you to do what you will do. But God also has his plans for you. Now we don't have to follow them. But that never goes well. Fighting against God's plan is always a losing proposition. But when you make God's plans your plans, and when you walk in step with God's plans and his will, then you have the confidence and joy that God wants you to have. Because you will see his plans, now your plans, falling into place as the years go by. I know the plans I have for you, God says. I hope you find confidence in that. Know that God has things planned out for you that are beautiful. And I hope that you and I have the strength of faith to follow and that we get to see these blessings in our lives. God be with you. And we pray. Today in our prayers, we uh, say a prayer on behalf of the family of Dory Bakke and a prayer of thanks. She was called to her eternal rest earlier this week. And we also pray for Joanne Weiss, who has been admitted to the hospital uh, with some very serious issues, heart failure and, and kidney failure. We pray that God turns this around but that also he holds her in his hands, as we know he will. And so we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for all of the blessings that you give us in life and that promise that those blessings will continue, for you know the plans you have for us. Help us to follow those plans so that we might benefit from all of those blessings instead of fighting against them. We ask that you show those blessings to, to Joanne and to her family, to Ralph. We ask that you heal her, if it is your will. But we know your will is to hold her close, and we hold you to that. Hold her close. Keep her faith in you strong until that day, soon or late, when you call her to be with you in paradise. Strengthen them, guide them, comfort them, comfort Ralph during this difficult time. We also thank you for the faith that you've given to Dory Baki, and now for making good on that faith by calling her home. We ask that you be with those who love her and miss her, and allow them to know that this is a, a temporary separation on this earth, a uh, separation that will end in, in all of us, all of your children sharing in that glory. Be with us, guide us, and give us patience during this difficult time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God be with you.